Wow, 2013, um, we're in Osaka, um, what was that, Aloha Summer Festival, mm -hmm. and um, I was noticing that, you know, because as musicians, we, we yeah. go to Japan a lot, and we, we were actually hired to do the Aloha Summer Festival that year, and people were asking me, he says, they want to learn how to play Hawaiian music, yeah. and they want to learn how to play the ukulele. Yeah. And I, I was amazed at the amount of people that I were actually interested. Yeah. And after this particular event, we went to Nagoya for the Nagoya Summer Festival. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing that I started to ask people about that. And, and they said, yes, the, the struggle is real. We want <laughs> to learn. learn. And yeah. there's not too many options there. I mean, there's a lot of sensei there in, mm -hmm. in Japan that teach um, um, ukulele, right? So there's always that availability to learn ukulele. But a lot of the Japanese, they want to learn from Hawaiian people. For sure. And especially, you know, some, you know, people who are established musicians, Definitely, Hawaiian yeah. musicians, you know, this is our life. And, yeah. I, and I, I guess the benefit from mine was I was teaching ukulele for, gosh, over 25 years. Um, I worked at Alvarez Hotels. Um, and, as one of the entertainment coordinators and and for almost 20 years there I would teach ukulele um, four classes a week wow. and so it when I actually had to compile all of those students that I've had in my lifetime it came out to about 60,000 that's amazing. Yeah. So, you know, and that's and that's something that you know is always a passion of mine. Teaching is sure. a passion of mine, and I think if, if anybody's interested in becoming a teacher, you know, in, in any fashion, you gotta have a passion for that first. Definitely. Right? You know, and you know that's something that I I myself saw the need, and we started it, and it it took a few years to get yeah, to get me definitely. properly you know the proper visas and whatnot to properly teach and whatnot in japan mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um we got it established and you know ever since then I, i've been i've been going up on representing uh, waipuna mm -hmm. and we created waipuna music school back in 2015 officially oh. Oh, yeah. And so it's 2021 right now, so yeah. that's six years. Yeah, <laughs> that's amazing, though. And yeah. so you just go up on, like, workshop basis. Workshop basis, yes. And you go to all the cities? Pretty much. That's amazing, yeah, though. That's so good. Pretty much. So, so what kind of things do you teach them all in this school? Okay, so uh, when it comes to my ukulele classes, mm -hmm. I, I generally... Um, I generally started with three different uh, classes. The first one, of course, is beginner. Um, and people always ask me, what does, what does beginner mean? I says, yeah. I, I usually will keep my beginner's class for those who have never picked up the instrument before, mm -hmm. right? Um, and to some, I have a lot of my intermediate, which is the next one, yeah, mm -hmm. and intermediate um, will mean that you have some sort of understanding on the ukulele. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't, it doesn't need to be, you know, really good mm -hmm. you know some sort of understanding mm -hmm. because i would in the beginner classes i usually stick within four basic chords mm -hmm. so if you are intermediate and you know these four <laughs> basic chords yeah. a lot of times you're going to say okay well i i spent money on things that i already know yeah you know yeah, yeah. so that's when you come to my intermediate class mm -hmm. but there's a lot of my my intermediate students that will come to the beginner class also they well, like it's always good to be yeah I always like yeah. to keep fresh <laughs> that's so good and so, but besides ukulele, you, you teach vocal? And I do teach vocal. So mm -hmm. there's been, you know, um, in my classes um, throughout the years, um, there's, a, there's been a lot of my students that say, I want to learn how to sing. Yeah. I want, can you, can you teach me more in singing? So I have been teaching vocal, mm -hmm. um, smaller classes, like, a, a, like a, a, just a vocal training. Yeah. But then also in various cities in Japan, mm -hmm. uh, particularly I have it set up in Osaka, I have it in Sendai, I have it in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. um, we do chorus classes. Oh, 
okay. and that's the way we can do you know like, like a larger group right okay. and I set I, I will actually create um, an arrangement to particular songs and usually it's mm -hmm. by Puna songs right and I, I would mean double double ad advertising correct, <laughs> right so it's We're usually definitely. a Waipuna song yes. and I would actually create an arrangement for the choral oh. choral class to sing and so when we're in concert, you get them. we bring them up. That, I mean, but how amazing for them. They get to sing it's with It's an Lipuna amazing, and you know, <laughs> and it's funny because, you know, we're, you know, we look at this in myself as a musician, you know, yeah. coming back to Hawaii, we're a dime a dozen, you know, yeah, you know, I just, you know, we're t-shirt, t-shirt, so, shorts and yeah. whatnot, and, you know, coming, I got to wash dishes, yeah. but, you know, when we come to places like Japan and we're and in the idolizing, room, like they're idolizing yeah. this, we don't realize that sometimes, you yeah, know, we just sure. treat ourselves like a, like a regular musician. Yeah. But when they get off that stage and you see them absolutely just drop to the knees and start bawling. They cry, and they yeah. said that was the most exhilarating experience that they've ever had in their life to be mm -hmm. singing with you guys on stage. Yeah. And in a three part harmony mm -hmm. and it's an accompaniment to mm -hmm. the band. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that is something that I've really taken for granted yeah. as it's far as myself. It, it's very humbling. Yeah. Very humbling. And you know, it. I didn't realize how important this was to students there that they want to perform along they with do. you. Yeah. Question though, when it comes to your classes, you yes. have a translator or? Yes, <laughs> that is the important part, and yeah. that's that is something that especially for for the style that I do as far as teaching, mm -hmm. they have to understand concepts, mm -hmm. and so that is something that I always have to budget, mm -hmm. and that's something in my classes. It's very important to have a translator. Definitely. I, I know I've, I've done uh, a lot of workshops with Kumu Hula. I was a musician yeah. and whatnot. And some, you know, some with, with, with Hula, they can get away with um, not can. having yeah, a translator. Yeah, because you can watch, but like... With um, yeah. ukulele, it's so important that I do have a translator because the concepts are so important. Mm -hmm. It's like math. Mm -hmm. I always tell my students this. It's just like math. In order to get to this level of division, you have to understand subtraction and addition. <laughs> if you don't understand this, you you're can't not going to understand mm -hmm. that. So, mm -hmm. so, but once you understand this, this part gets easier, and the next well, part gets easier. Well, it's because it's a foundation Correct. that you're creating. Yeah, for you're sure. creating that foundation, mm -hmm. and you know, I I have certain ways that I'm te that I teach my students. And throughout the years, and not necessarily for, with my particular students in Japan, but throughout the 60,000 students that yeah. I've learned in my lifetime, yeah. um, my specialty was be a being able for them to play songs within an hour. That's, well, I mean, that's amazing, though. And there's a certain niche to that mm -hmm. um, that I mean, I've and learned. that speaks as it's how good of a teacher you are. You know, I mean, I come from a family of, like, school teachers, you know, right, coaches, right. and so, like, and I've realized that it's definitely there's a there's a way to teach, you know, and Absolutely. going through school and you have teachers that are great teachers. Right. And you have teachers who are just smart at what they do. Right. But right, not right. necessarily a good teacher. Correct. You know, I use that same yeah. process also because my mom was a teacher. Yeah. She just retired as a teacher for from uh, 40 years. But, you know, I, I have the same values mm -hmm. and I understand that because she was a teacher. And if, you know. I actually want to be a teacher also, but my lanes mm -hmm. went a different way. Yeah. However. I mean, but you're still teaching. You I are. I am still teaching. <laughs> I am still teaching. But I've always likened to this, like, in sports, mm -hmm. right? Um, you Sometimes you have the best football player. Mm -hmm. I mean, breaking records. But, but not necessarily the, they make the best coach. So I usually sometimes do the same thing in the sense of, you know, you have great musicians, mm -hmm. but not necessarily they're the best teachers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, th then there's sometimes you, you got some really great musicians. Yeah. And they are really great teachers yeah. also. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it's amazing because I've sat in yeah. some of these and some well, of I mean, these I think teachers, it makes yeah. you like when you're a good teacher, too, it makes you almost a better musician. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. That is so true. Yeah. That is so true. Yeah. But you know to be you know to be able to teach a certain concept and mm -hmm. that's always the the key to to this 
is to teach you in a way that your students will understand. I usually have this one, um, this one process, especially with my beginner mm -hmm. classes. You know, if there's 20 students in, in my class and everyone's first time, I usually will, will do a um, kind of the uh, nine tenths, mm -hmm. meaning that out of the 20, there's usually going to be two people that will not get it, that will yeah. completely not understand mm -hmm. anything that I taught. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Yeah. I, I understand that. Because but as long as the rest get it, correct. then... Correct. The other, the other nine tenths mm -hmm. or eight tenths or whatnot, mm -hmm. I, I, I will usually kind of keep on, on to this where the progression is there. Because you're right, this is an, this is an actual instrument. Yeah. You know, people spend years learning mm -hmm. how to play mm -hmm. this instrument. And I teach them how to play it within an hour. Yeah. Um, and that's just the beginner. And of yeah. course, the progression after that. Sure. But, you know, so there's a lot of things that I've learned along the way to be yeah. able to understand. My students effectively understand how to be comfortable mm -hmm. in playing in that way. And then, of course, moving on to the intermediate class and they learn a lot yeah, yeah, yeah. of concepts. Yeah. Thank you so much for sitting down and balaoing with us. Thank you. Yeah, mahalo nui. Um, and we want to encourage all our Japanese friends to follow Matt and look for his post and go join in his Waipuna Music School. Yeah. So, mahalo nui. Mahalo nui. Uh -huh. Welcome to Art Pacifica, powered by the world's largest Polynesian dance store, Aloha Hula Supply. Become a member to enjoy video content, monthly specials, quarterly giveaways, and discounts on premium workshops. Together, let's learn, share, teach, and grow as we uplift our cultures and support each other. Mahalo!